Okay, we're here today with uh, Lynn Spencer and Deidre Miller. We're, we're just going to talk a little bit about Deidre's ministry. She's the executive director of Safe Harbor. And uh, tell us a little bit about what is Safe Harbor. You've been there how long? How Good long question. Been there? Yeah. A very long time. Um, I think it's like 19 years. It was, I had a broken, I stepped away for five years. So right. okay. began as a volunteer in 98. Wow. With, Deidre, with uh, Dion. Uh-huh. Dion McElhinney. Dion McElhinney. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And um, then became her assistant. And then I left in for a few years and came back as client services director in 07. And I've been director for three years now. Wow. I've had amazing. some big shoes to fill. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mentor, lady to me, a great spiritual rock in my life and learned a lot from her absolutely so mm-hmm. she involved in it at all anymore prayer prayer, prayer team and That's we meet part of it. we meet occasionally uh, for lunch and we we talk it's refreshing and yeah. uh, she wants to know what prayer concerns we have yeah, so she's a great sure. prayer warrior so if you were to say just kind of capsulize the heart and ministry of safe harbor like this is the bullseye of what we're all about. What, w- what would you say? The bullseye is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Awesome. The gospel is the bedrock of the why we do what we do in the name of Jesus. Um, he He's the author of the ministry. After Roe v. Wade in 1973, I believe it was God's will that pregnancy centers around the country would spring up. Yeah. Right. And... Um, and that's what Safe Harbor is. Our aim is to reach women who are at risk for abortion, mm-hmm. to supply them necessary information about their pregnancy, if they're in a place to discuss options. Right. Uh, everything's Emotionally, permission. physically, and spiritually. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's a, a synergenic, holistic right. picture right. of where you are as you're making um, a very difficult decision and a life-changing decision Sure. Yeah. for a woman especially. So when, when a client or a uh, person comes in to Safe Harbor, mm-hmm. um, they've heard about you somehow. Uh, I, I guess through a friend or website, website, website. word of mouth are the okay. leading ways. They so do. they're sort of looking already. Yes. They're yes. somewhat seeking. Exactly. Now, when they come in, are they, are they seeking advice about an abortion? Are they seeking a pregnancy test, or what's their f- reason mainly? For, you think for coming in? Uh, all of those, all of the above. Primarily, now is the ultrasound, and that is our right. appeal. That is our appeal. How they find us is through Google searches, um, free pregnancy tests, pregnancy confirmation, um, abortion. They can be looking for abortion near them. And the only reason that Safe Harbor comes up in that search is that our website includes abortion information. So it's strictly a Google algorithm right, that we would come up that they're responding to and so they can go to the website they can schedule online or they can call so they are coming um, to gain more information about abortion and especially the ultrasound they are yeah. wanting they want to that. know they are wanting to know how far along they are they're wanting to know um, hmm. if it's viable if it's even necessary to have an abortion, um, Where miscarriage. Are mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Miscarriage it happens more frequently than most think. So wow. if there is not a heart motion, there is no need for an abortion. So our appeal is come, let us give you more information about the development of your pregnancy. And if you would like, we can discuss types of abortion and what's involved. And there's parameters. So depending on the age of the pregnancy, Hmm. um, a medical abortion versus a surgical abortion, you know, and they want to know that. And another rising reason is paternity. They want to establish who is the father. Can you do that there as well? Medically, uh, they would say, we can't do that, but based on dates of knowing yeah, activity. you know, activity. They might can discern right uh, mm-hmm. based, you know, a ten week pregnancy versus a six week pregnancy, and they would know who the father is. 
Wow. We yeah. wouldn't know. And they will make a life or death decision based on that. Do they have to oh. have permission of that father at, at your clinic to do? Mm -hmm. Fathers have no rights. Fathers have no rights. It, that's This would be an unmarried father or even married father even has married. no rights. Even I mean, married. Uh, there is a misnomer with, uh, I think, pregnancy centers that we're just seeing 15 to 19 right. year olds no. no we're seeing married couples in the military wanting anonymity wow. uh, wanting to bypass insurance they'll wow. come to us for the free services it could be a married couple with two or three children and not wanting a fourth wow or you know there's all kinds of different sure. seasons and stages in life not yeah. just what we normally think Right. So this recent Supreme Court decision on Roe versus Wade, mm -hmm. how ha has that changed your situation or the situation in Florida? Uh, how, what's going on with that? What's going on? Okay, so what Roe did, or I like to just kind of clear the air, the Supreme Court looked at this case out of Jackson, Mississippi, because mm -hmm. in Mississippi they ruled that abortions were not legal after 15 weeks. And an abortion clinic challenged that. So I then see. it traveled up to the Supreme Court. They had to look at the Mississippi case um, and make a, an opinion on the Dodds opinion. And once they did, they upheld the Mississippi court. Right. So then that challenged wow. Roe. So then yeah. they had to look at Roe. And that's how it, it got revisited. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And was w did the Constitution confer the right? Of abortion and they determined in a five to four vote that it did not Amazing. so now the issue of abortion has been handed back to the states which yes. is where it should have been initially right in Florida um, July 1st our governor signed um, the bill I don't know the number but uh, banning abortion after 15 weeks okay so it was appealed but the court quickly within two or three days in the first week of july turned that around so in the state of florida abortions are banned except probably those cases the ones that the are ones typical yeah. mm -hmm. so how has the row changed us so neighboring states had trigger laws in place in the event that row was overturned right so we have neighboring states who have banned abortion altogether. And they include Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas. So what we've seen in recent weeks is a uptick in phone calls and online scheduling, uh, calling us looking for abortion. Again, the keyword search, they're, they're looking for- That's what they're for. finding, but that's obviously not what you're offering. It's not what we're doing. It's right. not misleading. It's strictly right. a Google keyword sure. search, just yeah. so. But we clarify right out of the gate, whether it's an online appointment or a phone call that we are not an abortion provider and that we do not refer for abortions. But again, we make the appeal. I spoke to a woman who oh, actually called awesome. from Jackson, Mississippi, a mother of two children. This was just last week. And I happened to catch the phone and she was looking for an abortion. And I said, she asked about the medical abortion, which is the use of the pill. There's mm -hmm. a couple of types right. and many don't the understand. Pill. Oh my goodness. Well, there's methotrexate and there's the RU486 and we educate women on what those medications are. Wow. And, yeah. And the, the risk of them as well and how they operate. But she called looking for that and you know i told her we are not an abortion provider and she goes oh and i said just asked her kindly if you had an ultrasound do you know if you have a a viable intrauterine pregnancy and i kind of define those terms and and the importance of knowing that does she, that open the door it does it really does it That's does a great because question. she had an abortion scheduled in chicago and she said i'm just Whoa. trying to find a place closer to home where i can go and so i was able to do a search, um, Safe Harbor Pregnancy Medical Center is an affiliate of a larger national organization, mm -hmm. pro-life organization called CareNet. And I was able to get into their database, search for an affiliate, use their zip code, and I put her in touch with a pregnancy center that offered ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, she well, wanted okay, that. Because that was a phone call. She so had she in. found one in Mississippi, or you found one mm -hmm. in Mississippi. That's she awesome. Locally. And gave her the number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. So we're seeing Great. that. Yeah. Um, 
That's, that's and you surround that with prayer and trust that her heart will be turned. And I did. And I told her that. And I, yes. and I said, I'll be praying for you. Absolutely. Yes. And mm-hmm. they like that. I bet they like that. I bet they welcome they that. They do. And they say thank you. Thank you. Yes. That's probably a touch. There's something about human nature. You're wanting a sign. Right. You know, I found in uh, the, the thousands, Such if I could say, point. consultations with women. and Searching. They're trying to make a decision and they're looking for a sign. Right. You know, whether they're in Christ or they're Buddhist or whatever faith that they are. They're searching. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you never know when you're speaking truth uh, right. to someone if that's one of the signs. Yes, that that's what for. the Lord's yeah. going to use to oh, get there. Oh, such a ginormous decision for a person to make. I mean, it's right. like this is a life decision in so many ways. Yes. So when a gal comes through the front door, what are the odds of her um, choosing life as opposed to someone that calls on the phone? Are there statistics that you have? Like I don't have that number, specific number. It's a good question. Um, the statistics that I'm reporting up through June uh-huh. is um, believe we have seen, um, I believe it was 273 pregnancy tests altogether. Up through June of this through year? Through June. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I take that back. It's uh, like 200 se- 373 and ultrasounds are 273. Mm-hmm. Those that have made a decision for life who yeah. are at risk yeah. and then made a decision for life are 95. Wow. 95. And those who've made a decision for Jesus Christ is 25. That's amazing. That's great. So... The ultrasound, um, I reported to our board just recently, we had nine, uh, 83 pregnancy tests in June, and I believe it was 27 or so at risk for abortion. So we're seeing many intending to carry, and mm-hmm. that's something else that it's others don't understand. Mm-hmm. What do you think that's about? Just the the just intending to carry because yeah. we're well known in the community. That's awesome. We are, we're 33 years in the community, and the health department refers women, OBGYNs refer women. So they're wanting pregnancy confirmations. Right. And we're there. It's opportunity to share the gospel. Absolutely. And the other thing is that um, because abortion has gone on for a generation now, um, it's just top of the mind with unplanned pregnancy. And even when they are expressing they're intending to carry, we can do follow-up calls and find out something's changed. Yes. Uh, sure. Because yeah. there is follow-up, right? Yes, it's to the best of our ability. What, what information mm-hmm. they give you. Mm-hmm. So yes. so once again, you've you've been in the ministry there for a long, long time. Long time. And is there is there any certain person, story, yeah. uh, family that, like you go, wow, you know, this this one really just sticks out in my mind and uh, just uh, what a miracle. Or right. mm-hmm. m- maybe mm-hmm. you could share a little bit about a I story. I think you had a gal share a couple years ago that was just, mm-hmm. had a story that was just. There's so many yes. stunning stories, and yeah. I get to write um in this new director position, I get to write stories every month. Oh, that's awesome. It is. And they let you, those people will give you permission to do that? Yes, it's anonymous. Okay. So we, uh, we, don't, we try not to use descriptors that would help others identify who the person is. Right. But I, um, to the power of ultrasound, I'm just recalling a, a, a woman that I met with. We were really busy one day and I had to meet with a woman. And she was in her late 20s, educated and of wealth, a Mm. family of wealth. And she had been to the Tallahassee abortion clinic uh, like the week before and found out she was too early. They couldn't really determine anything, which was to her benefit. Mm -hmm. So she searched and she wanted the ultrasound. Sure. She did. And so I, headstrong young lady. Yeah. And she had had one abortion previously when she was in college. Oh. And so we know that women who've already had one abortion are 60 t- 60% more likely to have another. Mm. And she was abortion determined. She had gone to a Christian college, but now was following a Buddhist kind of faith. And so spiritually. She's single. Mm-hmm single, very attractive, yeah. athletic, had goals, very, very goal oriented. Yeah. And I'm I'm kind of rough. I haven't been in the consultation um, uh, arena a whole lot in the last three years. 
but I met with her and I'm praying, Lord, I'm trying to reach her and um, just help me. And there, I was answering her questions. She was a- asking questions about medical abortion and what was involved and the rate of failure oh and a lot of critical things she did not know. And no change was evident at the end of the consultation and our processes are that then you move on to ultrasound sure. and we did and so we get into ultrasound we have a brand new machine uh, last year we were awarded a, a spectacular machine with all the bells and whistles that has even the doppler wow which means you can listen to the heartbeat we never had that ability oh, to before awesome. yeah. that will change a lot I would yes. think. i remember when you got your first one yes they were on our third it yeah, seems right? like they last about seven years That's and awesome. um, but this one we can control the frequency, so there's concern about having uh, frequency on a right. young, young heart. And so that's why we never did it before or had the ability. So the ultrasound technician um, announces to her, you know, she's doing the abdominal scan, and she goes, now I'm going to turn on the Doppler. Mm. So it's kind of like... I call it uh, the baby EKG. Yeah. And you can see the boom, 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 boom. Oh, boom. Yeah, sure. and, and then she puts, and she goes, now we're going to listen to it. Oh, and this tears woman, are coming. Oh, oh, my I'll goodness. Bet. She just, her hand went. Wow. Really? Yeah. And I was, she came alone. <clears throat> so I was sitting as a witness. I have, we have to have a witness during the scan. And sure. she turns to look at me and she goes, this is why you do this and i just kept silent and the ultrasound technician said yes oh she said this is why you do this because you want me to know it's a real baby or yeah yeah. exactly it it turned her it completely turned her and the tears were flowing and so the technician and i as we're standing outside and she's um getting dressed um, I said, well, I think this is a case where we need to offer the familial scan. Um, by law, we can offer a second scan um, because it is a pregnancy decision. And what we like to do is invite the father of the pregnancy to, mm. to come return. Right. And I said, well, let's offer that when we go back in there. Well, when we get back in there, she goes, can, can I get another scan and, and bring the father with oh, me? And isn't I said, that great? Yes. And they did. They they returned the next week, hmm. and just powerful oh, weeping. And um, she had on an engagement ring. They were planning to be married. That's awesome. Um, that was part of the conversation, and also the consultation. You're investigating the relationships. Yeah. Uh, the strong That's relationships, the relationship with the baby's father, and because she's going to need support. Right. No matter what decision she makes, and we right. want to express that to them too. And. In, in so my conversation holistic. with her about th- her boyfriend, um, she did see herself in the future with him, and marriage was down the road, but they wanted to build a business. So, uh, yeah, interesting. So yeah. it must be quite a, I mean, rewarding. I know what it's like to kind of be in a pastoral role and you meet with people with marriage problems who are considering divorce. You meet with people who are trying to make a decision about life or Mm -hmm. even receiving the lord and you know it's it's not like you write these people off if they don't do what you want them to do or what you feel god wants them to do because he still loves them he still cares about them but there is a lot of this kind of up and down emotional impact on you when you invest all this like heart and prayer in this person and they kind of go no i'm just going to do my thing and I'm sure, I here for. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you see that a oh, lot, yes. the, the whole yeah. like, oh, my goodness, I can't, you know, so it's, it's yeah. huge. Yeah, it is. Um, I think they call it compassion fatigue. <laughs> yeah, that's a good it is word. What it's word. Called. It is yeah. what it's called. Yeah. And so just getting away with, uh, with the Lord and yes, there's weeping. I remember sure. leaving at times going home and before the bridge construction just pulling off the road yeah. just by the yeah. before going over the bridge and just kind of weeping and crying and yeah it's in it's Greeting. in god's hands yeah and um sharing the gospel too is is a great opportunity there as well um and to see the pathways of some people mm-hmm. yeah. um yeah. having grown up in the church mm-hmm. youth that's why i have a passion for the youth here yeah um 
pouring into them because you can hear their histories of even right. growing up in the church, sure. That's what's going on mission in. trips, yeah. being involved, and then falling away. Yeah, and the sorrow that mm. that you can feel for them in mm-hmm. that moment. And uh, but Lord, the Lord is the rescuer, and He's able. He's able to bring them home. Right. So in, in that context, let's say um, a girl comes in. She wants to find out how far along she is or if she is or if she isn't. And you have this initial consultation with her. How, how do you, I mean, I know how I, I'll have uh, like <laughs> counseling with a couple who want to get married. And... I have a certain way that I sort of parlay Same into sharing the gospel. How, how does that happen in your scenario? I mean, I, yeah. I, I talk about, you know, let's talk about uh, being equally yoked or whatever, and then I kind of say, suppose this, and sort of find out where they're at spiritually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this person comes, how do you breach that gap? How do you open that door? Opening the door, so yeah, this is what I gospel. trained volunteers to do when I was client services director, and um, because we're dealing with the public. Right. Yes. Yeah. You have no the public. Do they have an application that they fill out mm-hmm. initially? So that gives you a little bit of a. So they're they're not coming for spiritual advice. They're no. coming. No, for they're coming physical. for medical yeah, assistance. And medical. Yes, and and we have to keep that in mind. Sure. So, at the in onset of the consultation, I make the woman aware that we're going to be doing a, like an interview where right. we're exploring where they are physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Okay. Yes. Yeah. If you're uncomfortable with any question, please let me know. Skip past none of your business. I want to respect you where you are. We just want to help you with the needs that you have. And so the spiritual discussion comes at the tail at the end. I've already learned a lot about her. Uh, It's it's mighty to see the power of the Holy Spirit working because they've already called them to that. He's already called them to that place. He has. He has. We've prayed over them. Exactly. Yes. not an accident. And the divine appointments with the advocate and the patient are incredible. Your expectation is that that's what that is, a divine appointment. It is. That's awesome. It is. So building the bridge of connection, I'm sure you do it, like building a bridge of trust. Um, They don't care how much you know. I don't really know how much you care. Yeah, sure. And so they are typically in a broken place. Mm -hmm. The Lord is near a broken, contrite heart. Humility is there. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit, at at the end, when you ask permission, is it okay if I learn something about your personal spiritual beliefs? Asking permission. Asking permission, reminding them that, and they can, you know, they can negative that, uh, skip. But many do, very few. Um, yeah. And they, they'll look at me sometimes curiously. What What do you mean? I say, Well, break the ice. How were you? What was your spiritual beliefs growing up? Right. How were you raised? Right. That's you know? a good question. Yes. And um, we go from there. And um, what do you believe about God? Um, I, I don't know why the story is coming to mind. It was like a a sixteen or seventeen year old years ago. I can see myself sitting with her and she was still grieving the death of a couple of loved ones Mm -hmm. maybe a a mother and then a cousin Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the cousins was a violent death and she'd abandoned god you know god must not be real because of the deaths the deaths you know where was god yeah yeah and um for whatever reason the holy spirit just brought to mind you know we were never meant to die Mm. God created us to be eternal. I said, but sin entered in. Mm. And God God has a plan. Yes. He just gives you a divine, Mm -hmm. uh, the Holy Spirit, a divine word for that person. And nothing more was really much said, but you could see she was absorbing that. Right. Um, And just reiterating God's love for them. Mm. And... I love John three sixteen. I it's my go to. Comes off the page. <laughs> it does. I and I John chapter three the yeah. entirety and yeah. that's kind of my go to. I uh, will say so I call it Nicodemus story. Yeah. Nick at night. Nick at <laughs> night. You night. know you must be born again. Yeah. You know, there it is. Born of spirit. Um, he loves you. He has an eternal plan for you. That's amazing. And it is. So like a gal comes in and you have this initial consultation. Do you mm-hmm. do the sonogram that day? 
there are Everything. many rules of engagement for that. Yeah. So our receptionists are stellar. Yeah. They are gatekeepers. Yes. So we are a medical facility. We employ all of the medical malpractice insurance. We have yes. a medical director. We have to be careful of liable situations. Right. I would imagine. Right. We do not have a doctor on the premise. He reviews our ultrasounds remotely. It's uh, He's a retired OBGYN. Mm -hmm. So grateful for him. So the answer to that question directly is no. Mm -hmm. However, the receptionist, if she is gleaning that this woman is at risk for abortion, then she's going to schedule her so she gets the one, two. I get you. Mm. Um, but it is still determined by the medical staff. There are things that do disqualify. Someone from com when comes in. Yeah, if there's a medical issue, certain medical issues are out of our scope Certainly. of care. And, because and of we, liability, absolutely. Right, and we, I don't want to jeopardize my ultrasound technicians because they right. are skilled and they can see things, Yes. but yet they cannot communicate. Right. The only uh, diagnostics mm. that we can communicate are baby. The Presence. age, yeah, the age, the heartbeat, and the placement. We are helping to rule out ectopic pregnancy For, right. and miscarriage. Um, you have to refer them pretty quickly then. Yes, we do. Yeah. We even call ahead to the ERs if need be. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. that's good. So let, let's talk about some of the uh, logistics of your clinic. So it's located where where is safe harbor what, what are the mm -hmm. hours mm -hmm. right and uh, when could someone come by there do they have to make an appointment first can they just show mm -hmm. up how, how does that all work sure. and, and where are you actually located in pensacola good question we're in the heart of pensacola you are you got a great we location. love our location um it's at the corner of ninth and Bobie street mm -hmm. right. uh 2280 north 9th avenue right. across from the one blood center it's a 4,200-square-foot building. It was previously a medical facility in the past, so it's just mm. ideal. Right. It's had its problems, but the, the layout of the building is perfect for us. And our hours are Monday through Friday. Um, Friday is a half day, uh, 9 to 12, skeletal crew, yeah. really just doing the medical side of our ministry. Uh, Monday through Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, 9 to 5. Wednesday, nine to four. So how are you supported? Are you supported by donations or? Strictly by the church. Really? I would say it is the church. And that's amazing. Uh, Coastline Calvary Chapel is one of those faithful, longstanding yeah. supporters, monthly givers. So, yeah, so that's what sustains it. It is. And sustained us through COVID. Oh, uh, wow. uh, even when we, you know, lost our fundraising banquet, we, we saw that. People were faithful. The Lord just faithful. impresses upon um, his church right and certain ministries to support uh, and so we saw that um, that's pretty amazing it is yes yes a testimony we do not receive any government funding we right. have chosen not to mingle ourselves it's probably with smart, smart. Yeah. yes so so during covid obviously we all kind of had to shut down and things were kind of like what's yes. going to happen <laughs> But it seemed like when we came out of COVID, at least for the church here, uh, we saw, uh, not necessarily financially, but we saw numerically an increase. And I think people were, mm -hmm. were fearful. People were searching. searching. People were like, I want to be together. Yeah, yeah, what's going on? I mean, it's kind of like, uh, I want to be back in uh, an atmosphere of real worship instead of just watching it. And so, so your situation, did you see uh, an influx of people after COVID, or was it like? So good question. Yeah, I this is we what we saw. Well, as far as partners, donors to the ministry, we saw an increase in giving. That's great. Without even Praise having anything, Lord. and I testify to what you said. People, I believe, are wanting to invest in the internal. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And they were also doing their own self examinations right. of their soul um, because. That was an incredible event. The whole COVID shutdown, right. the oh, whole yeah. world shut down. Right, like what's going on? And Safe Harbor was shut down for six weeks. Um, it was actually a perfect timing because we had some major building renovations. It was incredible how the timing of that, and God took care of it. 
explicitly in that six weeks. We yeah. could not have been open with the level of work that had to be done. Yeah. We kept serving our community, though. So those of us who are trained to do the one-on-one um, pregnancy options, information mm-hmm. sharing with those seeking abortion, because we did get phone calls the HIPAA laws were relaxed during that time, so we transferred our phone line to key people, mm-hmm. sure. including myself, who could take the call, and we were able to digitally text the abortion information that they needed right. um, uh, about Still their options. We them. call it we call it options education information. So we were able to do that and encourage ultrasound again so we wow. never we never shut down and then the other arm of our ministry we have a few <clears throat> the ongoing support for for mothers right. whether I, they're intending to carry or they turned around and chose to carry our positive parenting um, is crucial Absolutely. i believe to show Uh-oh. that we do care about the whole family and so during covid we were able to text lessons to these moms and then they could come back you know their needs from they might need to shop in the baby boutique and we couldn't bring them inside the building mm-hmm. right we just took their order and we went outside and we we yeah, gave them awesome. the, the baby items that they needed so the baby boutique is that just a donations by area churches and all of mm-hmm. that the local yeah. churches will host baby showers sometimes for us, we, and as you said, there's been an incredible outpouring. So our baby boutique, we don't know where to store everything. That's a great point. problem. Yeah, so we're just kind you of have asking. formula and everything. Formula, <laughs> no, no, we're not saying that. Okay, <laughs> just want to check. <laughs> we did, but we had the run on formula. I'll sure. bet you did. Sure. I'll bet we you did. did, and that's something free. So we do emergency supplies for our food. We're, right. we're never going to ask baby bucks for food or formula. Um, and we're on the first call for help for that. So Absolutely. the community can call and ask for help. And if we have it, we just give that away. So is most of your staff volunteer or how many are? Staff, there are 11 of us. 11. Oh, okay. We're all part-time. Uh, myself and my client service director are salary. And then uh, as far as in-center volunteers, I would guess right now we have about 15. Do you have enough volunteers? We could, could use more volunteers. We could use uh, additional ultrasound technicians with their RDMS mm-hmm. to volunteer. Nurses, uh, RNs, LPNs, we're looking to hmm. add in medical service, STI, STD testing, oh, strictly wow. for, only for the women at risk right. for yeah. abortion because they're they need to be tested if they're going to have an abortion they need to be tested so we're just waiting for god to supply the the manpower there yeah i would imagine probably one of the most um, gratifying times would be rewarding times would be when one of these moms comes back with a live little baby baby and says i want you to meet whatever yes. you know you had a gal do that out of the banquet i remember that a couple of years ago yes yes yeah yvonne it and translates. i still in um touch with her that child is 10 or 11 years oh old my now goodness. yes so amazing stories um and stories yeah. that just pop out of nowhere i'll share this one uh, back in january at a, a fundraiser it's a walk the micah 6 8 walk for life and mm-hmm. the benefits uh, go to safe harbor well I was walking the event while my office administrator was manning our table. There was a woman who came up and struck up a conversation and said, many years ago, I went to Safe Harbor. And she told the story of married couple, three children, just had gotten themselves to a financial you know, breather, right, Right, and um, employed in good jobs, and she discovered she was pregnant, and she did not want this baby, because she saw it as going back into financial debt. So somehow she found Safe Harbor, she wanted the ultrasound, she was encouraged by a coworker, Mm -hmm. and she came on her lunch break, got the ultrasound, and she was relaying the story to Bobby, my office administrator, and said, it was because of you that I chose life. Wow. And that day, the father and her little girl were running 
for life. Oh, wow. Wow. That cool. little Full girl circle. who was born, and she just described her as a joy. Um, she was on the running club of her elementary mm-hmm. school, and her coach yeah. said, hey, there's going to be a run. And when the mother looked up and saw that it benefited Safe Harbor, she said, we've got to run that run oh. <laughs> and do that run. So this dad and awesome. daughter got to run Isn't for life. That a great and that reached back like years. Yes, 10 yeah. or 12 years. Yeah. It's amazing Very how gratifying. That, uh, I, I was dedicating a baby a yes, Sunday. Sunday. So after the dedication, because I'm so old, <laughs> the, the mother came up to me, the grandmother of the baby came up to me, so you know you, know you de- dedicated the mom two years yeah. ago. <laughs> I went, really? You okay. Got generational stuff. So now I'm doing this generational okay. stuff. Yes. But what a, what a great what thing. What a gratifying you, thing. You not only get to Deidre. involved mm-hmm. in the physical saving of life, but as well as the spiritual saving right. of life. Mm-hmm. And, and also, I think, giving people the awareness of just the the miracle of life itself spiritually and physically so mm-hmm. you know so if someone wants to get in touch with safe harbor what, what's what's your website address mm-hmm. how do they do that good question we're trying to publicize this more yeah. uh, with our partners it's shfriends.org shfriends.org so that S-H takes them right friends. to your website dot dot org. and there um is it's our partner page uh, where you can give you can set up a a regular giving regiment uh, mm-hmm. you can volunteer there's a volunteer page inquiry Great. where you can oh fill that's out good that. information mm-hmm. and yeah. there's the categories you can check what you're interested in and we we will get back to you wow so you are the director you see over <laughs> all of that <laughs> yeah. oh Deidre yes. that's amazing it is so I was the reluctant leader I <laughs> did not want to go into this that's position the best kind. Well. so definitely the Moses yeah and um I, I stepped into it out of obedience. Yes. You know, I, I, I remember when you. Did I that. think the best kind of leaders are reluctant yes, me leaders too. because they they don't go into it for self, they don't go into it for position. I can do this. Yeah. They kind of go into it really Leaning because God boxes them into it. <laughs> he <laughs> great did. Place. That's what I he love does. It. I felt like I saw that <laughs> happening, but that was awesome. And that's the best yes. way. I your think. heart was turned towards there anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We started off as a volunteer. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, I that's did. Right. And I was thinking of this story how I kind of describe myself. I'm not a. I never pursued pregnancy center work. It really yeah. was my own personal story. And sure. hearing Dion in 1995, yes. you had her. Right. Um, share about a fundraiser and I thought oh so that was the seed yes and then as I describe myself I'm more like the monarch butterfly <laughs> That's beautiful. you know in the fall mm-hmm. we see them migrating to Central America and you go over the bridge and they're everywhere and you know they look like they don't know where they're going <laughs> but they have a destination and so the Lord is uh, my guide, I might not look like I know where I'm oh, going, or analogy. I don't know where I'm going, but he knows where he's taking me. And it's me. beautiful. Yeah. Yes. So, that's, so my husband plots and plans, and and that's great. <laughs> yes. And, sure. and we need those, talent. and I'm I'm be- getting better at that. But yeah, I'm more of the. That's a great story. butterfly. Well, yes, we're you glad are. you're doing what you're doing. You're and doing I know a great Pensacola job. is glad, so and you. Well, thank you for being here today. Thank and you. Hopefully, a lot of people will respond to Safe Harbor, and mm-hmm. a lot of lives will be saved. Absolutely. Well, I'm so appreciative for my home church, Coastline, oh. for supporting Safe Harbor. The investment sure. is Absolutely. eternal, and the reward is yes. yours. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Deidre.